is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do car chuck scv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2020 mazda cx3 courtesy of jack giambalvo mazda in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so you guys probably already know i've already done the cx30 the all new suv from mazda for 2020 but i still got to check out the cx3 i feel like i've done this one the past few years so I always like to see if there's anything new and there are plenty of changes actually for the 2020 model year of course I will be going over them all in all Mazda is known for its legendary handling elegant looks and incredible value so I'm quite excited to get started on this one so what do you say as always let's go ahead and start with pricing so when it comes to pricing let me start with the first major change for the 2020 CX-3 being that the touring and grand touring trim levels are eliminated for the 2020 model year so essentially you have one trim level option being the sport comes in front wheel drive for $20,640 or an all wheel drive configuration for $22,040 and so powering this little beast is going to be a two liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 148 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 146 pound feet of torque available at 2,800 rpm power again sent to front wheels or all wheels through a six speed automatic giving you mpg numbers coming in at 29 in the city 34 highway for the front wheel drive 27 in the city 32 on the highway for the all-wheel drive configuration and so before we do any kind of acceleration test in the Mazda CX-3 I did want to mention there is a sport mode button is located just to the left of the shifter so let's press it you guys probably heard that it did immediately downshift for me so it is going to hold the rpms at a much higher level still hanging on to that gear but anyways by holding the rpms at that higher level it is going to give you a little more acceleration on demand there it's also going to adjust the shift points as well and i did want to actually also mention although there's no paddle shifters on the cx3 you can still manually shift through the gears in this one if you wanted to to do that simply slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left and although 99 percent of the time there is going to be no need whatsoever to manually shift through the gears but we are in Pennsylvania so if it were to happen to snow and you wanted to do some engine braking that option is going to be there for you so that's kind of nice and so but now having mentioned all of that and since we are yet still in that sport driving mode what do you guys say let's go ahead and do a quick little acceleration test in our 2020 CX-3 and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right you guys coming up to my straightaway now let's come to a complete stop here in five four three two one here we go <laughs> Not the quickest thing in the world, but it's okay. It's all good. This is more of a commuter car anyways It should definitely be enough to get you up to speed when you're merging onto the highway or something like that And hey, there's another Mazda CX-3. What's up? Obviously, it's a pretty popular vehicle if that guy had one But I will say when merging onto the highway that sport mode beside the shifter there is definitely going to be your friend That's going to help you accelerate just a little bit quicker there But having said that it's not the quickest thing in the world But then again, that is sometimes the sacrifice you have to make for the amazing reliability that Mazda is known for so this is an SUV that is going to last you quite a while. So that is kind of the trade-off when it comes to reliability. They're not always the quickest cars, and this, this may fall into that category. But nonetheless, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so I did want to mention to you guys, braking setup is actually going to differ whether you go with the front-wheel drive or the all-wheel drive configuration. For example, front-wheel drive setup is going to be 11.02-inch ventilated front disc. However, with the all-wheel drive setup, that is bumped up to 11.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back it's going to be the same regardless that comes in 11.06 inch solid rear disc back there as far as the braking feel goes that has been 100 on point in my short little test drive today so certainly no issues with any brake pedal delay or anything like that definitely brings the mazda cx3 to quite a quick stop so that is a good thing but touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension with the stabilizer bar in the back torsen beam rear suspension and as far as ride quality goes it's been pretty good so far today. I will say I'm going over some rocky terrain right now. And actually, it's it's really good over these rocks. I've had a lot of other vehicles not handle it as well as the CX-3 handled that right there. So actually, ride quality is definitely very nice in this one. As far as steering feel goes, it's something that Mazda is definitely known for. They do have a little weightier of a steering feel, comparatively speaking, to other manufacturers out there. So steering feel definitely feels good in the 2020 Mazda CX-3. Nothing too heavy, nothing like a Mustang or something like that, but still quite a nice 
nice feel to it compared to the other SUVs in X segment, I should say. As far as cabin noise goes, it's been relatively quiet in my test drive so far today, so that's nice too. And touching on visibility, I could definitely see perfectly fine out the back. Absolutely no issues there whatsoever, so visibility is 100% on point. In addition to that, Mazda went above and beyond when it comes to visibility because they added rain sensing windshield wipers coming standard on the 2020 Mazda CX-3. So essentially what that means is when the CX-3 detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it will automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you, kind of like automatic headlights. So it's one less thing you have to worry about. Better helps you focus more of your attention on enjoying the drive in the Mazda. So that is definitely a big old plus as well. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2020 Mazda CX-3. All right, you guys, so here she is, the new 2020 Mazda CX-3, actually looking very good still to this day in my opinion. So let's go ahead and start up front on this one now. To the sides, LED headlights with auto leveling will come standard, of course, on this one. That auto leveling feature, that's something you usually find in upper trim levels of other manufacturers. So I do love that Mazda just put it on their one and only trim level being the Sport here on the CX-3. Automatic feature, of course, coming with those headlights, meaning when it starts to get dark out, they're gonna turn on automatically for you there. Adaptive front lighting system. Once again, Mazda killing it with the headlights. Adaptive front lighting essentially is when you turn the steering wheel going around the bend at night, those headlights will swivel. Better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a squirrel or a possum or whatever. And again, that is yet another feature that is typically found on either luxury vehicles or very top trim levels of other manufacturers and sometimes it's not even found. So once again, well done Mazda for that as well. LED daytime running lights coming standard up there as well. And of course, taking a look at the center front grille, you will find that chrome molding surrounding the bottom portion of the front grille there so definitely looks good up front but let's now go ahead and make our way to the side here so let me first start by mentioning the most obvious way to tell the difference between the CX-3 and the CX-30 being the CX-3's floating roof line. What that is is that gloss pillar all the way towards the back. It's going to kind of distinguish itself from the Mazda CX-30. So floating roof line on the CX-3. Black window surrounds coming standard when it comes to those side mirrors. They are body colored power adjustable side mirrors with integrated turn signals. You can actually get silver roof rails if you wanted them for an additional $300. That is an option on the CX-3. When it comes to the side skirts, I always like to mention it. They do come with a matte black finish on both the side skirts and the fenders. Some SUVs do body colored, but the CX-3 is going to be finished in a matte black. Then taking a look down at the wheel setup, 16 by 6 inch aluminum alloy wheels are the one and only option and they certainly look good. At least they're a double five spoke design, so they definitely look good there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back. Starting up top there, you do have a body colored shark fin antenna, which is nice because some other SUVs in its class actually make that a matte black shark fin antenna it kind of looks awkward up there so i do like it it's body colored rear spoiler with an integrated brake light coming standard of course just below that rear window wiper and just below all of it dual exhaust outlets actually i love that with bright tips and they are exposed. A lot of SUVs these days are tucking them underneath and putting fake exhaust outlets. So I absolutely love that Mazda left them exposed and their dual exhaust outlets in a four cylinder. You hardly ever see that either. So what do you say? I think you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So, but now since we are around back, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a manual lift gate as expected. So, essentially, just lift up underneath that rear lift gate, and that is how you're going to go ahead and open this one up. Once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 17.8 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there of course is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 42.7 cubic feet, which in typical Mazda fashion is below average for its class. Typically Mazda does make SUVs with slightly less cargo space, but slightly more driving enjoyment. I don't know why that's the trade-off, but still 
a little below average for its class, but 42.7 with the second row folded there. And you will also find a cargo area light back there as well. But then making our way up to the rear leg room, that is gonna come in at 35 inches even. For reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Of course, the rear passengers can also find a rear center armrest with cup holders. That's always a plus as well. But since then making our way to the front seats, they are manually adjustable cloth seats. There's no heat available. There's no leatherette, no power adjustable seats. It's a pretty basic setup, but then again, it's a very affordable price point. So that's what I'm gonna back that up with. But anywho, seats are definitely comfortable. No issues with finding my perfect driving position still. So it's definitely a good thing. Take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is wrapped in urethane. No leather steering wheel available on this one. Then make your way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Mazda logo at the very top. Then lock, unlock. It is a pretty basic key setup, but good news is, here's a big plus for this price point. It is a push button start. So if you wanted to, simply leave the key in your pocket. Simply just put your foot on the brake and press that engine start button, which is located just kind of to the bottom right-hand corner of the gauges there and so this is where it gets a little better when it comes to the gauge setup you will have the odometer and the gear that you're in found all the way to the left on the right side you're gonna have how many miles you have left until you hit empty in your outside temperature front and center of course you have your tachometer there is a digital speed readout within that tachometer that's a pretty cool setup and a lot of Mazdas use that quite honestly but the best part is even with this CX-3, you kind of have a heads up display. And I say kind of, because it's not actually displayed upon your windshield, because that's usually the better type of head up display, because you are looking directly forward. But it's slightly below that. You have this little plastic thing that pops up when you start the vehicle, and it actually displays the head up display right there. So I did find myself actually looking at that quite often. It is much more convenient than looking all the way down at the gauges, I will say that. So it is actually very functional head-up display. It's not as good, of course, as the one that's displayed on the windshield, but it's pretty darn close to be quite honest. You can still very easily keep your eyes on the road and watch that at the same time. So honestly, for this price point, having a head-up display at all is pretty darn cool. But so anyways, making our way to overall interior quality now. Again, at this price point, it is a pretty standard setup. However, I will say there are some optional features that you may want to go with. There is a frameless auto-dimming rear view mirror with home link controls for up to three different garage doors. That's a $325 option if you wanted that. There are aluminum CX-3 door sills. That is a $100 option if you wanted to go that route. But as far as the standard setup goes, again, it's pretty basic. You do have some leather with some contrast stitching found just above the climate control settings there. And those climate control settings, definitely a very easy setup to use. You're going to instantly know how to work that. I do like the design found on the doors of the CX-3 right around the power window buttons. It's kind of an imitation carbon fiber look. It's not authentic of course, but this price point, it really shouldn't be. Just in front of the shifter, you have dual USB charging ports. You also have an SD card slot and a 12 volt power outlet and a little bit of rubberized storage in there so things don't slide around as much. Just behind the shifter, you have an electromechanical parking brake with an auto hold button actually as well. Just to the side of that, you have your circular dial and buttons to control the infotainment screen. Although the infotainment screen is touchscreen as well, and I'll get more into that in a second, but just behind that, even more storage. And of course, you do of a center armrest and if you're wondering where in the world is the cup holder that is found kind of just below the center armrest here so i don't know i guess if it's a tall drink you might have to leave that center armrest tilted up so you have space to actually put your drink but if it's a smaller like mountain dew can or something like that you could probably leave the armrest down and just put your hand in there and get it but as i alluded to let's now go ahead and take a look at the tech display front and center you will find a seven inch color touchscreen display and again you can control it using the circular dial and buttons just behind the shift it's probably going to be the easier route while driving or when stopped it is a touchscreen display as well like i was saying but this is actually pretty cool it does come with bluetooth and audio streaming it's still at this price point comes with android auto and apple carplay and that's the big win because that means all you need to do is hook your smartphone up through one of those usb charging ports i was mentioning and therefore you have free navigation displayed up on that tech display as well as the ability to like and dislike your pandora songs there's youtube music a bunch of different compatible apps you can choose to display up there so that is a huge win right there especially at this price point you can of course check out your radio settings up there as well and by the way you will find a six speaker sound system coming standard for the cx3 so do believe you guys know what we have to do next let me go ahead and turn the radio let's see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one All 
I miss listening to Bush. It's been so freaking long. But anyways, sound system is pretty much as expected. It's six speakers. It's not going to absolutely blow you away, but it'll get the job done for the size of the CX-30. I will say that. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display, of course, is when you do put the CX-3 in reverse, you will, of course, find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so let me first start by mentioning the very most important part about safety. The 2020 Mazda CX-3 is an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So that's a huge bonus there. Front side, side curtain airbags will come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also rear child door locks back there. There's a tire pressure monitoring system that comes standard, but also standard. This is where it really gets good. There are a lot of advanced safety features that come standard, including a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert. That's awesome. Smart city brake support with pedestrian detection, forward collision warning, adaptive cruise control with stop and go. A lot of times that's more of a luxury feature or a feature at least found on upper trim levels of other manufacturers. That's huge and a lane departure warning system as well. And so, but anyways, you guys, that is about it for this one. As far as my final thoughts go, a ton, absolute ton of value still to this day in the Mazda CX-3. So definitely a huge plus there. If you look at a Consumer Reports magazine, it's gonna show you excellent reliability or well above average, I believe is what they call it. So the very best reliability rating, I should say, by Consumer Reports. Still looks absolutely wonderful, has amazing steering feel. That is another huge bonus, really the only only trade-off to the CX-3 in my mind is the cargo space. You can get some of its competitors do have a little more cargo space, but still at the same time, still a super solid pick here. With the reliability, the standard safety features, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, so really definitely something you probably want to consider and test drive. But that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.